In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Word of God to which I would direct your attention on this, the feast of the baptism of our Lord Jesus, is recorded for us in the prophet Isaiah, chapter 42. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering whip he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on the earth. In his law the islands will put their hope. This is what the Lord God says, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to all who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open the eyes that are blind, to free the captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. In the name of Christ, the ever blessed one, my dear Christian friends, sometimes you and I want to do our very best for those who are special to us. I'm reminded of the little girl who loved her mother so much and wanted to show her mother that love by helping her in the kitchen. She decided that she would help her mother bake some cookies. And of course, the kitchen was much more of a disaster when the little girl leaves, but she leaves with this big smile on her face because she was able to help her mother. As you and I grow older, we still have that desire to serve those that are important in our lives. A young athlete wants to do his or her best for the coach that is deeply respected and admired. And so the long practices and the extra workouts are no burden because they are done out of love and devotion. Even in our Christian faith, we have a desire to serve someone who is very special to us. And as we consider all that our great God has done for us, there is within every Christian a desire to serve the God who has loved us so much. We understand that a very important part of our role as Christians is that of the life of a servant. This is a life that we all share together in his name. But one servant is completely different from all the rest. One servant stands out among all others. And this is the servant whom God himself identified in our Old Testament uh, reading, the text for this message. This servant is the perfect servant. This servant is God's gift to you and to me. But the question must remain, who is the servant of whom Isaiah speaks? Surely it is not us. Now we may dare to think that we serve well. Even those of us in the clergy office may sometimes feel that we serve God well. But we all fail. And so we have to ask ourselves the question, does God always delight in us? Do we always do what makes him continually happy? Can God say of us, here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom I delight? And if we are honest with ourselves, we have to admit that we are not the servant of whom God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. In a very real sense, we are much like King David. King David was a servant of the Lord. And in some ways, he was a very good servant. 
but God didn't always delight in him. You may remember that there were times when David served no one but himself. There were times when David acted as though he were his own master. And there were times when, quite frankly, David got tired of serving the Lord. Do you remember how David made up his own rules for life? He decided that it was okay to commit adultery with this young woman whose husband was far away at war. And then when she turned up pregnant to cover his tracks, he decided it was okay to murder her husband. Surely God could not say of David, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. And God can't say that of us either, can he? We may try to live as God's servants, but it doesn't always work that way. We have good intentions, but they are easily altered. And I'm reminded of something that my father said to me over and over again, the way to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> That's what happens oftentimes in public service. An individual is appointed or elected to an office of public trust. And he or she starts out with a commitment, promising good things, intending to use his life as a servant for the people who have placed him in that position. And then at some point, instead of serving, the official manipulates the law to serve his own personal needs. And when the newspapers and the prosecutor's office finds out about it, as they did with Jimmy DeMora, oh. then lives are ruined and the public trust is violated. Now, the newspapers may probably not be interested in our failures as living as God's servants, and prosecutors certainly are not going to bring charges against us for our schemes to outwit God's will and to manipulate his holy law to serve our own ends. But this does not make us any less guilty. We are far from being God's perfect servants. You and I, together with David, must confess, I know my transgression, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, O oh Lord, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. If no one here is the perfect servant of God, then who is? Where is this servant? of whom Isaiah speaks in our text for today. We find him in our gospel reading. We see him baptized by John the Baptist. We see the heavens open and the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove, and we hear the Father's voice from heaven say, This is my Son, whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Do you know why God was pleased with his son? Because in the words of Isaiah, everything his son did was just. Jesus came to be the perfect servant who would show us what real justice was through his own life. He showed that the right way was God's way. He didn't do what was convenient. He didn't do what was easy. He didn't do what was fun and pleasurable. He didn't do what brought fame, popularity, and wealth. He did what was right. He did what God wanted done. Amen. And Jesus even once said, I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is why God would always delight in his son. Jesus didn't live for himself. He was a true servant. He had no master but God. His poverty was no excuse for him do, not doing God's will. The taunting and ridicule of others didn't keep him from doing God's will. The tempting of Satan didn't keep him from doing God's will. <coughs> the 
threats and abuse of violent people didn't keep him from doing God's will. The prospect of great suffering and agonizing death on the cross didn't keep him from doing God's will. And God was always pleased with him. As St. Peter reminds us in his letter, he committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Is he a different kind of servant? Absolutely. Jesus is far different from us because he is God's perfect servant. He served in a way that you and I are supposed to serve, but never do. He served as we perhaps dream of serving, but never achieve, even with our best efforts. He served faithfully, where often our service is characterized with failure. Jesus sets the standard for service, and he shows us what it really means to be a servant of God. In Jesus, we have more than just an example of what it means to be a servant and a demonstration of perfect service. Isaiah the prophet tells us that in this servant, we have a light for the Gentiles to open the eyes that are blind. We have a servant who came to free the captives from prison and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. Isaiah is talking about the relief and comfort for imperfect servants like you and me. He's offering hope 